speaker. Uh, he's from ICTP and he has the longest title of the talk in this workshop. Nabas, please. <laughs> thank you, Ali, and uh, thank you all. So yeah, it's pretty <laughs> long, so I will try to um, make you understand <laughs> better <laughs> during the talk. So uh, I will talk about today uh, most of the my PhD work carried out at ICTP under the supervision of uh, Ali Hassan Ali and Ralph Kepaver. And a couple of slides I will uh, talk about uh, with my work that is done in my post PhD studies with lab of uh, Edgar Olden. So why glutamine? So I have to uh, build a bit motivation. So from uh, almost uh, uh, one and a half uh, decades, there is an interesting field of research uh, which are trying to understand the intrinsic fluorescence of protein. So actually, if you shine a light um, uh, on protein and if it intrinsically glow, it means that it contain intrinsic chromophore, which are the three amino acid out of the 20. And these uh, amino acids are aromatic in nature, and uh, they have the density to absorb in near UV and emit in the visible. So this picture was true till 2004, but later on uh, in the lab of uh, Gupta Sharma lab, when the Shukla and the coworker also see intrinsic fluorescence uh, of uh, crystals of lysosine, uh, which even don't contain the aromatic uh, amino acid. So this uh, unconventional uh, emission in protein uh, uh, really puzzled <laughs> uh, many people. And uh, later on, uh, 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 people uh, try to understand what is the origin of this fluorescence. And interestingly, this kind of fluorescence emerging uh, like the during aggregation process. And it is, if you see, like it is a, a function of uh, aggregation time, the fluorescence intensity increase. And this observed also in other um, complex uh, system like uh, amyloid fibrils. These are those architecture which are involved in the neurodegenerative diseases. And they have also similar uh, kind of emission, which is non-aromatic. So the commonality in, in this kind of structure, which emit this uh, uh, non-aromatic fluorescence, is the presence of dense network of hydrogen bond. So then the uh, our collaborator in um, the Cambridge came up with some really simple system, like glutamine. So in its crystalline form, glutamine contain four amino acid. Uh, which are connected through hydrogen bond. And uh, they tried uh, to, um, uh, uh, to do experiment, fluorescence experiment on this simple system. While during the incubation, they observe one interesting thing, like uh, the L-glutamine actually uh, chemically transformed into a new structure, which was unknown before, which has completely different chemistry than the glutamine. It contained very, very short hydrogen bond. It is complex with ammonium ion um, and uh, it also has crystalline uh, form, and its uh, fluorescence characteristic is similar to what uh, I showed you before for the complex uh, uh, other protein ar architecture. So this imposes a very interesting question. Like a chemically different structure shows similar photophysics, why? So then my PhD project is now actually uh, work in two direction. In one direction, I was uh, applying theoretical tool to understand the molecular origin of uh, uh, the non-aromatic fluorescence and using uh, the glutamine uh, aggregates uh, because the data we have from our uh, Cambridge colleagues. So this needs a lot of um, um, a lot of uh, tools like uh, to 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 discuss the ground state properties, excited state, and then see what are the role of hydrogen bond network and if uh, there is some uh, uh, other nuclear interaction coordinate which are involved uh, in uh, making electronic excitation, such as protein transfer. So this is one part of uh, my work. And today, I'm not talking at all about this. And if uh, uh, someone um, is interested to this, we can discuss, maybe in, in emails or in Skype. But I will uh, do another part, because this aggregation mechanism uh, happen in aqueous solution. So uh, what is the role of solvent modulating the structural properties? of this system are in journal uh, to proteins. So today I will talk about this. So I look at um, the structure dynamics and, uh, and interactions of water at these uh, uh, glutamine interfaces. As these are very simple system, like they're single amino acid, same kind of species. 
So it provides an excellent uh, uh, system to study the interfacial property. In, okay, so what kind of the uh, questions that uh, one can answer? For example, water in in a, uh, uh, in a neat water, it's like a, a homogeneous system. It has uh, many uh, uh, different types of dynamics, uh, such as like vibrations, librations, and uh, stretches, and how these different um, and dynamical modes of the time scale associated with the dynamics will change when the water is in the hydration shell in the complex biomolecules, such as protein, DNA, and lipids. Okay, so we use the glutamine um, uh, surfaces, so we just periodically repeat the unit cell of glutamine in three different directions to generate three different surfaces, and we uh, uh, so the, so we, we face one um, uh, face of the glutamine to the water and run long simulations uh, using a Gromex package and try to understand how the different uh, 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 these different surfaces which are different in their chem in the chemical uh, uh, nature and also the geometry so how this alter uh, the structure uh, and the dynamics of the water so first quick thing is to look what uh, also, the Ricardo uh, was showing for his system to see some uh, static quantities such as like uh, density profile or the charge or the mass density profile. So, due to the um, uh, different chemistry and the feature of uh, each surface, so water uh, uh, attain a complete different structure which you can see from the density profile. For example, in the surface two, you have a, uh, a double layer uh, of water at the interface. Uh, also, the surface three has a, a sharp uh, shoulder, uh, double layer shoulder, and surface one is have completely different uh, uh, structure. Similarly, uh, the water exchange dynamics when it's in the hydration shell are also completely different, and they are slave also to the heterogeneous environment which a surface provide to the water. So we compute residence time. So the residence time of water, like how long a water continuously stay in the hydration shell of each surface. And then we fit these uh, residence time curves with the function shown here, which contain like three exponential, one stretch exponential and the, the two normal exponential. So it shows that there are different time scale associated with the water exchange dynamics. Sorry for the gamma, it is in the exponent. So gamma is tell you like how heterogeneous uh, is the decay. So if the gamma value is less than, um, uh, one, so it is like a glassy uh, type of environment, and if it is equal to one, it's like a normal decay. So each surface actually provide a glassy heterogeneous environment with different type of uh, gamma, and uh, as you see, like these glutamine uh, surface, sorry, they are they are uh, very hydrophilic. So the time scale of the exchange dynamics they are quite uh, long. So we also check like other things. Uh, rotational dynamics or translational dynamics and uh, the surface has like some uh, highly hydrophilic uh, pockets where water can uh, trap and it's rotationally frozen very long time to make rotational flicks so we also look at the uh, rotational dynamics and uh, we fit the curve with also a stretch exponential and there is also a degree of heterogeneity heterogeneity in the in the rotational dynamics uh, of the water so uh, the from now actually uh, i want to add uh, uh, a few uh, uh, slides uh, on top of the roman talks that you listened yesterday uh, on the first passage time so for this um, uh, surfaces we also look at the first passage time of the water and uh, here actually uh, i will go slowly <laughs> maybe you are seeing the movie uh, so the Roman showed you the picture uh, on the right. So the first passage time of the water is like the when a water hit a boundary first time. So we note its time. And uh, in a real uh, system, you, you see like on the left where I show you a movie. So it's a complex uh, 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 surface. And uh, we assign clock to each um, uh, water molecule. And the Roman built uh, um, uh, a way to infer the diffusion, uh, which he showed you yesterday, uh, on the, on the basis of the first passive first passive time statistic. But what he didn't tell you five minutes left. Yeah. Okay. So what he uh, didn't explain uh, is that like this uh, first passage first passage time statistics uh, give you much more, uh, particularly like it can uh, 
uh, probe the surface chemistry and geometry uh, of uh, the underlying surface. So you see like down uh, the X and the Y skin. So we look at the first passage time along the X and the Y in the in the columns. And you see it's beautifully capture the periodicity of the of the surface and also the chemistry. For example, the peaks you can see uh, here in the X skin, like the large peaks, they're corresponding to those pockets where you see uh, strong charge groups are there. Uh, and similar, it's repeat itself. Uh, and similar into the Y axis, so you can see there is a pattern which is completely uh, captured by this um, dynamical dynamical matrix. So we used here um, uh, only the translational degrees of freedom. So we just uh, look at the water translational motion. But there, this could be much more rich. For example, we didn't look at all means uh, if there are fingerprints uh, of rotational dynamics over the time scale where uh, water can make flips. Can it's also capture some kind of uh, uh, surface uh, chemistry or uh, some kind of uh, its uh, uh, topography? Uh, there is also <laughs> maybe at very very short time scale there are also water vibrational modes, and one can assign also clock to the water uh, water vibrational modes. Uh, so this is very 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 like uh, 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 rich uh, problem, but the appreciation is is like that. These are, we are looking at uh, like picoseconds and a few angstrom. The length scales are few. So this is the resolution uh, at like uh, the few uh, angstrom, like hydrogen bond distance, and the time scales like they are in picoseconds. So that, that is one thing that I add on top of uh, the Roman talk that we did yesterday. And you can see now here, for example, on, uh, for the three surfaces, how the first passage time actually captured the feature of the underlying surface. So on the on the left side, you see the, the 2D density. OK, it is a static metric. You take many, many snapshots and average over time. So it will tell you what are the underlying surface is. But on the, uh, on the right, you the column, you can see it is uh, the mean first passage time, which you can see so it's tell you uh, uh, a bit more detail uh, about the about the underlying uh, surface. So the, the conclusion is like that: the statistics of the M MFPT, the mean first passage time of water molecule, can provide the fingerprints uh, of the underlying uh, surface, uh, its periodicity or its uh, chemistry, and there are much more to look about it. For example, in this work, uh, we only de uh, we only did like one D and I think two D escape of water. But one can also look at, for example, the first passage time in a cage or in a sphere. We didn't do it yet. Maybe it, it will be more uh, uh, more interesting. And also, for example, uh, uh, Alan, I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there an experimental evidence for MFPT measurement or? So not yet for this resolution. <laughs> for example, this atomic, uh, I say, uh, resolution or this picosecond times. Uh, but I don't know for other complex system like a big micro uh, system and long uh, time scale. Maybe uh, in active matter there are some experiments, but uh, not not yet. Uh, so how do you validate your uh, results? Is there any? Oh, it's a question, and actually <laughs> we discuss it uh, a lot. Uh, I, I don't know at the moment. <laughs> means how it experimentally can be probed. Maybe there are some neutron scattering experiment can do it, but uh, I'm not sure like uh, uh, what is the method to do this. Uh, maybe Ali, Ali Hassan Ali can add some comments in this. Mm. OK. Uh, so yeah, so with this, actually, I'm done. <laughs> and thank you for your patience. OK, thank you very much to be on time and for your interesting talk. So we have time to uh, ask two questions. I have one question. Yes, Nida. Uh, Nawaz, can you come back to your uh, slide nine? Slide number nine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, here you show very uh, nice pictures of the formation of water near the tree uh, surfaces. Yeah. But uh, I didn't get the point that what's the difference between the structures of these uh, aggregations that... Uh, yeah, so, okay, this is just for I. Yeah. So I am uh, showing you here water mm -hmm. within, say, uh, 3.5 angstrom or 5 angstrom. Mm -hmm. It's just a snapshot. But uh, it is like uh, the actual profile, the density profile is uh, above. So you where you can see like how as a function of C, the water density is, uh, is changing. So this is just an illust illustration, like how water actually adopt, uh, the first few layers of water actually adopt what is the topography of the surface. For example, if you see the surface three, you have like, you can see that the water has a curvy mm -hmm. wave because it's a feature of the surface. And in the surface two, you can see a little more penetration uh, of the water, which you can also uh, appreciate with this double layer on the top. So it's just for, you know, uh, uh, showing you like. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what is the resolution down. of? Uh, what What is the Sorry. resolution of? I mean, the the slice, the thickness of the slice. Yeah, that yeah, you... yeah. Okay. Okay. So I use like a uh, half angstrom. Half angstrom. Yeah. So the box is like uh, say is. Uh, I just want to remember how much one hundred and twenty angstrom. I think. So I make like. 240 slices mm. and when you go to smaller size you yeah, should you more, be, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah probably uh, i didn't check this uh, but i yeah i try first one angstrom so it was too smooth <laughs> and then i go with uh, slowly to 0.8 to then 0.5 and i think i check a bit more and then it's much more noise so i i, I then i stick with uh, mm -hmm. 0.5 and yeah, and as Neda said, it seems that uh, the, the water between two uh, proteins are very well structured. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So as I told you, it's very water. hydrophilic, yeah. and uh, it's, it's depend upon like uh, how the surface host means what are the pockets are there, what is the geometrical feature. So the first few water layer, what I'm showing, they almost adopt the same feature uh, of the surface. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Any more question? No. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, please. Uh, Marcus, I have a question. Uh, why did you choose uh, glutamine? Just to do uh, aggregation or no? Okay, uh, the aggregation mechanism actually that is done on the experiment that I told you before, and that is uh, for that their fluorescence uh, experiment. We also tried uh, not aggregation, but we, we use also like a concentrated solution of uh, of the glutamine to probe like a pre nucleation condition. And the result I don't have here, we can discuss it later, where you can see that uh, with the water, there is also glutamine in the solution, which diffuse into the hydration shell and form like a, a complex jelly type of interface, uh, which, which is like a crowded environment for water. And we look at the same uh, uh, density and uh, exchange dynamics of water in the crowded system. So we can discuss it if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Nawaz. Uh, so 